day, my father came out of the bathroom holding the National Geographic. And I was very relieved to see that it wasn't the same National Geographic I had been looking at in the bathroom. <laughs> he told me that he was going to terrace our backyard hill in northern Maine in the manner of the rice paddies around the mountaintop in Thailand. <laughs> that summer, I shoveled dirt. Every day, all summer long, I shoveled dirt until finally it was time to put in the first retaining wall. What's an ideal material for a retaining wall? Railroad ties, because they're free. <laughs> so my uncle and my father and my brother and I went to Stacyville, Maine, about 30 miles away, along back roads, and we went to the railroad yard uh, where we were going to pick up used railroad ties. And as we pulled in on Sunday morning, we discovered that the used railroad ties were right beside the brand new railroad ties which would probably last a few years longer. So we started loading them onto the truck. My father and my uncle and my other uncles were legendary for their physical strength. My father could take an entire railroad tie and throw it on his shoulder and march up the hill and throw it onto the truck. My brother and I spent the entire time flipping one small one end over end until we got it close to the truck where my uncle just grabbed it and threw it on along with the one on his shoulder. We didn't want to go back, so we loaded the truck as much as we thought it could possibly take. And then, as was the custom back in the day, my father and my uncle sat in the cab of the truck with the beer they so richly earned. And my brother and I climbed onto the railroad tires in the back of the truck and we started driving away. It didn't take us long to discover that he couldn't steer the front tires weren't touching the ground. <laughs> Thinking fast, my uncle jumped out, leaned out the open window, and he said, Dave, Doug, climb onto the front. <laughs> so we climbed up over the cab and onto the hood of the truck and out near the front bumper, and we put our feet on the bumper, and we sat on the hood of the truck, and he could barely steer. So we went off down the road. Now, this was a Sunday morning in Stacyville, Maine, so the chances of seeing a cop were about nil. The only authority was the county sheriff, who we passed on the road. <laughs> he stopped, and we kept going, and he just seemed to sit there for the longest time. We just kept driving right along, and he just said we were looking over our shoulder at him. He wasn't moving, and then he turned around, and he followed us. And then he just followed us for the longest time as if he were perplexed. Like, what could possibly be happening right now? The two kids are on the front of a truck. Finally, he turned on the lights. And when he turned on the lights, my uncle put his head out the window and he said, Hang on, boys! <laughs> and he kept on going. He didn't go any faster, he just kept going. Eventually, and there's no more other traffic at all. There's not actual addresses in Stacyville, Maine. It's just, you know, you name the person they are sending a letter to. And the cop pulled up alongside of us, and he rolled down his window, and he yelled out, What are you guys doing? My uncle yelled, We're trying to get away. <laughs> the shit. The sheriff laughed, and my uncle laughed, and my father laughed, and my brother and I, on the hood of the truck, we high-fived, and we were laughing. So what he really wanted to do was to get to the dirt road. So we got to the dirt road where he stopped. And then the sheriff walked over, and he said, what's going on? And my uncle explained that uh, we would be on the dirt road for the rest of the trip, not really a danger to anybody and we just needed to make it back home so we could build the wall. And the sheriff had seen these rice paddies before and he thought it was a great idea. <laughs> and he said, what about the boys on the front of the truck? And my uncle Neil said, you know monkeys grab onto their mom's fur and they swing through the trees? Those kids are fine. <laughs> the sheriff thought that was okay. <laughs> So that's how we drove home. And 
I'm re reminded of this story over and over again because my uncle uh, passed last year. And, and uh, he had this way that I learned about turning the tiniest of the most mundane of things into these wonderful adventures. Uh, he had to use oxygen for the last couple of years of his life, and he insisted that the hose be 50 feet long so he could go swimming. <laughs> and, uh, and he taught me that. And I have a lot of stories, and the reason I do is because when people ask me to go from the back of the truck to the front, I say yes. <laughs> Thank you.